So now what we want to do is we want to automate this macro. So we want to create a loop. There's two loops that we can use. And what we're going to use is the for loop first, and then we'll come back and do a different loop. So the syntax behind the for loop, it's essentially just a for and a next. And how I'm going to do it is have for, and then we're going to have for some variable, like you could have x or n or i equals one to however many iterations we want to do. So if we think it's going to converge after 10, we just do 10. Next. So what the next does is it fires. It goes down here, it fires back up to here. And the first time it goes around, it says for i equals one. And this is an integer. So it says i is one. And then it performs the copy, does the paste, comes down here, goes next. And then it sets i equal to two. It does that, three, four, right up to 10. And then when it comes down here the last time, it fires it back up here and it says, okay, well, we've just done i equals 10 um, over the limit. So there's no need in going any further. And it goes to this instruction, which ends the subroutine. So that's how it all works. In terms of tidying up, I'm just going to hit tab here. Remember the general principles. And so this looks a bit cleaner. You can kind of step through and um, it doesn't really matter for a computer executing this, but for a human, really useful just to distinguish between the different kind of levels that this goes through. Okay, so Alt F11, great. I'm gonna delete this again. So let's see it in operation. Click the button and it's done 10 iterations. Perfect, and it looks like it's solved. So that's the for loop. As you can see, it's still got this marching ants around it. So we can get rid of these by something called application dot, dot cut copy mode. So it's come up with that, you can hit tab, equals false. That's essentially just saying it's off. True would be turning it on. So this is the equivalent of pressing escape at this point. Like if I press escape, there you go. So now if I run the macro, it won't have the marching ants around it anymore. So it's completed and no marching ants, great. So that's it for the for loop. However, the astute of you would have noticed what happens if I've just run this three times. Well, not guaranteed to solve, right? That looks like it's solved. That's because it's gearing ratio constrained, i.e. the gearing ratio is the one that's doing the restrictive debt size. And so if sculpting governs, so let's set this to 85%. Then the whole process iterating is slower. So click this, and you can see it's still quite a way away. And it might be useful for us to have a delta. Control D, like these in sheet. So we now have a delta which says, okay, but how far away are they? So I can click it again. Still quite far away, click it again, click it again, click it again. So even if I did, uh, maybe if I did 20, that would get me close, I reckon. But you can see it's pretty slow. Okay, so what's the size of this F2, F9? It's kind of small. It's about $8, 0.00, .00 times 1,000, $8. So practically, it's probably close enough, but we don't want to take a chance, right? So the for loop isn't the best option for doing this. That's what I'm coming to here. So I'd like to introduce you to the next loop we're going to use. It's called the do until or the do while loop. What we can do is set it up so it solves, it, it'll keep iterating until one constraint is met. So what is the constraint that needs to be met? Well, it needs to be something to do with this delta. So these deltas equal to zero, but not just one of them, both of them. So we can either set up two separately, but that would be more work. So according to the guiding general principle that I laid out, try and do as little work in Visual Basic as possible and as much in Excel. So we can have something that has a 
let's say, the check. And the check, it's not just the sum of these added together because as you can see, these kind of one's positive, one's negative, and they can offset with no guarantee that the individuals have solved. So we need to use the absolute here, absolute. So what the absolute does is it takes any number and converts it into its positive equivalent. If you remember from your maths days, what it does is it squares the number and then square roots the number, and so that converts it to positive. Okay, so this needs to be zero. That's what we would do for the do-while loop. 